Welcome to EPG Pradeshala. I am Dr. P. P. Ajay Kumar, Professor of English, School of Distance Education, University of Kerala. Today we will discuss the life and works of W. B. Yeats, one of the most important poets in the last part of 19th century and the early part of 20th century. and he is included in the paper 20th century english literature w b yeats is a poet who bridges romanticism with modernism he has a very long career as a poet he was born in 1865 and died in 1939 he lived through one of the most tumultuous periods in the history of england as well as the world and we find that yeats developed as a poet along with the times even though he began as a romanticist writing about his native land that is ireland and its myths and its nature he later started writing about politics and philosophy and his own theories about the occult and the mystical experiences so he has a long career and he has dealt with wide ranging subjects it is also well known that w b h was responsible for the fame that rabindranath tagore got and uh, he was also responsible in one way for the nobel prize that he has got it is to be remembered that it was eight who wrote the preface to the gitanjali the english edition of gitanjali eight was very much moved by tagore's spiritual poetry and he considered gitanjali as a poem that that depicts the indian spirituality Yeats was originally a student of arts at Metropolitan School of Art in Dublin and was interested in mysticism at his early age after his meeting with George Russell his meeting with William Morris and john o'leary awakened his interest in cultural nationalism and through that he was associated with the irish nationalist movement so we find that the personality of age as a poet was shaped by all these influences and uh, to a certain extent we find that the irish nationalist movement and the leaders of this movement triggered in him a kind of enthusiasm that he expressed through his nationalist poems written in the later part of his life as a an artist and a student of art yeats got a great sense of the visual and the visual element that we find in his poetry may be because of his interest in art more than that he was interested in magic and the occult 
and that once again gave a deeper dimension to his personality. In his early days, he moved between England and that is Sligo and London and he was not in a good financial situation at his early days. It is true that Yeats's poetry is known for the use of symbolism and uh, Yeats was very much influenced by the French symbolists. We find that Baudelaire, Rimbaud, Valéry, Malame and Valéry were great symbolists who influenced W.B. Yeats. The symbolist movement originated in the 19th century and was very popular in France, especially in poetry. They tried to achieve musical quality to the verse and we find that the use of symbols helped them to bring about a different dimension to their poetry, mixing various images and sense impressions. Yeats used symbols to the maximum and we find in his poetry the visual and auditory quality mainly because of the influence of the French symbolist poetry. Another great influence on AIDS was Ireland and the Irish nationalist movement. AIDS had a kind of emotional attachment to his own land. We find that Sligo with its rustic beauty haunted him and he was very passionate about his native land. The Irish nationalist movement influenced him so much that he wrote many poems connected with this movement and he had great enthusiasm uh, for the fighters for free Ireland. The Wanderings of Oisin, published in 1889, was the first collection showing his interest in Irish nationalism. He even formed an Irish literary society in Dublin as well as in London. And the Celtic to Light, published in 1893, was a collection of stories as well as poems that epitomized the rom romance and mysticism of Celtic culture. So AIDS's association with his native land was a kind of emotional attachment that a son may have towards his mother and he continued that relationship until his death. Apart from his interest in Irish nationalism and the French symbolism, he was also influenced by the occult. We find that he came across the Theosophists advocated by Madame Blavatsky. Theosophy is a school of thought that believes in the knowledge of God that could be attained through spiritual ecstasy 
and direct intuition. W. B. H. who has a mystic bent of mind was naturally associated with this group. More than that, he was also associated with other religious philosophies like Buddhism and uh, spiritualism, astrology, etc. We find influences of these religious philosophies in his poetry. The reference to Spiritus Mundi in the poem The Second Coming and Byzantium is a clear sign of the influence of religious philosophies in his personality. It is well known that AIDS was infatuated by the beautiful lady Mudgun. He met her in the year 1889 and Mudgun was an active political leader who participated in the Irish movement and Mudgun was an extremely beautiful lady who attracted W.B. Yeats. He even wrote a play, The Countless Kathleen, for her and he proposed to her in 1891. But unfortunately, his proposal was rejected by Mudgun and though AIDS was disillusioned by the rejection, he continued his love for her and proposed to her again and again. But all his appeals were rejected by Mudgun. Mudgun married Magbride in the year 1903 and after two years they were separated. We find references to Aids's love for Mudgun in the poem Easter 1916 and a prayer for my daughter. The kind of reply that Mudgun gave Aids was very famous. She told him, rejecting his proposal, that the world would thank her for not marrying him, that they should continue to be friends and he should go on writing beautiful poems for her. It was a great disappointment for W.B. Yeats, but even then we find the poet using all these disappointments creatively by writing poetry. Another influence in Aids's life was that of Lady Grigory. He met her in 1894 in London. He visited her once again in Ireland in 1896 and from 1897 onwards he started spending his summers at Cole Park at a house in the county Galway belonging to Lady Grigory. And this friendship provided AIDS with an ordered, peaceful existence and an opportunity to meet and interact with other writers like George Russell whose pen name was A.E., George Bernard Shaw and George Moore. And with the help of Lady Grigory, J.M. Sinch and O.K.C., Yates established Abbey Theatre in London in 1904. Yates was married to George Hyde Lees on October 20th, 1904. 
17. She was 26 years old while he was 52. But this marriage gave him a kind of stability in his life and he had two children, Anne and Michael. We find that the years after marriage was very productive for W.B. Yeats and he got Nobel Prize for Literature in 1923. He was appointed as the senator of the newly created Irish Free State and he published many anthologies such as A Vision in 1925, The Tower in 1928, the Winding Stair in 1933 and we find that his years after marriage was really peaceful and highly productive as far as his poetic career is concerned. Now we can look at his poetic career from the beginning to the end. We can divide his career as a poet into three phases. The first phase between 1886 to 1899 which was a period of lush and late romanticism deeply imbued with Celticism, aestheticism, symbolism and esoteric doctrine. But the second phase between 1900 and 1918 was a transitional period as far as AIDS's career is concerned and it carries a kind of modernist austerity and impersonality of style. The third phase between 1919 and 1939 is the final phase which can be considered as a fully developed modernist phase where previous elements of his art are fully and highly developed and he has succeeded in developing a system of mythological thought built on an often obscure visionary symbolism. So we find a progression, a steady progression in the poetic career of AIDS and he was able to continue his career until his death and that is because of his untiring enthusiasm for writing poetry. Now we, we can look at the major themes in Aetis poetry. As we have seen earlier, he has dealt with Irish mythology in the early part of his career as a poet. He was steeped in mysticism and the Celtic mythology from his early days and his romantic works can be seen as an attempt to escape from the urbanism and materialism and they project the pre-industrial rural Ireland with all its folk traditions and purity simplicity and we find that his early poetry is an expression of his affinity for his native land. Another very important theme in Yeats's poetry is love. Love in its various manifestations is discussed in Aetis poetry. We find that 
Yeats himself had personal experience of love and disillusionment in love. So naturally, his poems may also deal with the divergent experiences of love. So the pity connected with love, the sorrow of love, and the reconciliation, all these various aspects of love are dealt with in his poetry. Yeats's strong feeling for Mudgun certainly forms part of his poetry and we find that his repeated request for marriage was rejected by Mudgun and he presents his infatuation for Mudgun and his anger towards her indifference towards him in many of his poems. And in one of his poems, he compares Mudgun with the Helen of Troy. And in both cases, it is the beauty and the sexual attraction that was instrumental in the destruction. So we find Yeats as a poet of love who deals with the divergent experiences of love with great passion. Another theme that repeatedly appears in his poetry is his family. We find that there is a very famous poem, A Prayer for My Daughter, which speaks about his concern for his daughter. He prays that his daughter shall be blessed with beauty, but not similar to Mudgun's, which was self-destructive. And we find that Mudgun is equated with mythological figures like Helen, who had much trouble from a fool that is Paris. Aids prays that his daughter may escape the intellectual hatred of Mudgun that makes one a prisoner of bitterness and arrogance. According to him, the only way to counter these evils is through ceremony and innocence. He walked in a prayer for my daughter through the images of the horn of plenty. Yeats also responded to the problems of a creative writer. His poem, The Circus Animal's Desertion, is one such poem which speaks about his inability to write poetry. It was one of the last poems of W. B. Yeats, which was published in 1939. He looks back upon some of the themes of his earlier poems and plays and compares them to circus animals that have deserted him, leaving him with his human passions. As we have seen earlier, politics is another important topic that he has discussed in his poetry. His interest in politics is mainly due to his involvement in the Irish struggle for independence. And the first poem that comes to our mind when we think about his political poems is Easter 1916. It was written in the memory of the Irish revolutionaries who took part in the Irish uprising in 1916, which saw them occupying the Dublin Centre and proclaiming the Irish Republic. But unfortunately, after a few days of stiff resistance, they surrendered and 15 of the rebels were executed. 
the refrain in the poem a terrible beauty is born highlights the antithesis between the casual comedy of the ireland of the past which wore motley and the new ireland which witnessed the birth of a terrible beauty he says all changed changed utterly and a terrible beauty is born the poem second coming is one which makes a prophecy about the second coming of christ in his philosophy we find that he believed in a circle of change that means every 2000 years there will be a, a kind of transformation of the world and christ was such a figure who has brought about a transformation in the world so the poem second coming published in 1919 was a phenomenal one as it presents a, a kind of a prophecy about the future of the world it begins like this turning and turning in the widening gyre the falcon cannot hear the falconer things fall apart the center cannot hold mere anarchy is loosed upon the world these first lines present the birth of an anarchy the first lines of the poem refer to an anarchic world and uh, yeats believed that the present anarchy will result in the birth of a new world with a new god and a new social setup in the last part of the poem he writes surely some revelation is at hand surely the second coming is at hand the second coming hardly are those words out when a vast image of spiritus mundi troubles my sight a waste of desert sand a shape with lion body and the head of a man a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun is moving its slow thighs so we find in this description the rough beast foreboding evil which is reminiscent of the beast of the apocalypse in the book of revelation a study of Yeats's poetry will not be complete without a detailed study of his poems written at various stages in his life because he was a poet who developed with time changed with the changes that occurred in his life and the world over he was a poet who responded to the changing times so a kind of comprehension of his personality and his poetry is extremely difficult i think we made an attempt to make a survey of his life and poetry through this module but a clear understanding of yeats will only be possible through a serious study of his poems written at various stages of his life i think you can use the reference material given as part of the module for further explorations of yeats's poetry thank you